Now we're going to look at f of x equals 1 over x. So, 1 over x looks like that. Okay, It has a uh, vertical asymptote at x equals 0, the y-axis, and a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, or y0. Okay, so these are lines that the curve is tending towards, okay, as you can see. So if we look at f of x minus 3, that will translate the curve 3 units to the right. Now, what that does is if I replace the x with x minus 3, we have 1 over x minus 3. And what happens is that if you translate a curve then all of its asymptotes get translated with it. So because we have this asymptote at the y-axis, at x is 0, if I move that 3 units to the right, uh, well, it's got to move 3 units to the right with the whole bit of the curve. So we now have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. The horizontal one will just stay as it is. Okay. But that one will move. Now, this is also prevalent with the equation because when x is 3, we get um, something that is un um, well, that doesn't exist because we've got 1 over 0. So, this curve will look something like this, okay, having been translated. Um, to the right. It's quite difficult to draw a superimposed one on top of the other um, without it making look as if there are some other transformations at work. But, so that should probably be a little bit higher, for example. Okay, so we can work out where it crosses the uh, y-axis by putting x is 0 and we get 1 over minus 3, so minus a third. Okay, and that's what f of x minus 3 would look like. Now, f of x plus 2 translates the curve 2 units up. So, there is this asymptote. So if I just draw in the original curve first. There is this asymptote at y0. And so when I move the whole curve up, the asymptote goes up as well. And so there is now an asymptote at y is equal to 2. Now, the asymptote at x is 0 will stay where it is, okay? Although that's, that is effectively moving up, but because it's an infinite line, it's as if it's staying still. And so this curve now looks something like this. And of course we could work out where it's crossing the x-axis there. Now this would be f of x plus 2. Now this is where y is 0. So if you have 0, we can take 2 from both sides um, and then reciprocal both sides so that it would be minus 1 half. Okay, and that's what the new curve will look like. Now, f of 2x would be a stretch factor of half in the x direction. So, here's my original curve. Now, if I'm going to stretch it by factor of a half, all of the x all of the x um, coordinates of the original curve will be halved, okay? And so the curve will look something like this. Okay? So it will be stretched inwards. Now the equation of it will be 1 over 2x, because I'm replacing... Oh, let's be consistent, shall we? be 1 over 2x, because we're replacing the x with 2x in the function.
Now, as for y equals a half f of x, what you'd actually find is that I should be drawing precisely the same curve as I just drew. I should have really left it up there. Now, why is that the case? Well, the reason is, and can be seen most clearly, with the equation itself. Because if you've got a half of f of x, that's a half of 1 over x, which is 1 over 2x when you multiply the fractions together. And so the equations are the same. So halving each of the x-coordinates is the same as halving each of the y-coordinates in for this curve. And this is really because 1 over x is a reflection of itself in the line y equals x. Okay, so really um, changing the, uh, halving the x-coordinates should be, end up being the same curve as halving all of the y-coordinates. So that's number four. Now, number five, y equals f of minus x is a reflection in the y-axis. So there's the original curve. So the blue curve, so this piece and this piece, will be your new curve for this. So you've got 1 over minus x, so minus 1 over x, both the same thing. Now as for minus f of x, that's just putting a minus in front of f of x, so minus 1 over x again. So these two are the same, because reflecting in the x-axis will be result in the same curve as revolting, uh, resolving, resolving, reflecting in the y-axis. So, this is another case of a curve that is an odd function. Uh, it is a rotation of itself about the origin by 180 degrees. Okay? So, that is how we can transform 1 over x.